thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Pandit. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for India, inviting me. Oh, my pleasure as well. They say India is already an emerged market in many sense. Uh, that really sort of picks up the benchmark for India in many ways. Do you think from a banking standpoint, City is recognizing that and is taking it to the next level? You know, we've been here since uh, 1902, and we have been therefore here for more than 100 years. Uh, all through these decades, we've been supporting India. Uh, we now have thousands of people on the ground. We have millions of retail clients. We have over 45,000 corporate and institutional customers. Uh, and we've been growing with them. And we've been helping our clients grow. And we recognize the potential India has. And more importantly, we've pr been proud to be part of its growth over these many years. And we're now completely focused on saying, how can we help our clients get to the next level? Indian companies have a critical role to play in globalization. And to harness that, we can help them harness that. And when they grow, we grow. And I'm looking forward to that. But by way of when you say, think of expansion, I mean, what are your thoughts about the expansion story from an India standpoint? I mean, obviously, it's, uh, you know, Indian conglomerates you're talking about, we've got, what, 12% of India's GDP coming from Indian billionaires, and that's only going to go up in the years ahead. Are we looking at a huge corporate opportunity, a consumer opportunity? I think we're looking at both. Every aspect of India is growing. You not only have the large companies that are now becoming multinationals, mm. and, uh, and it's a different type of multinational. It's not only multinationals that are going to the developed markets, but they're going to the emerging markets. And so they need that help, and we help them around the world because mm. we are in more than 100 countries. And we're doing for them what we used to do for the large American and British multinationals. Right. But it's also the smaller, middle-sized companies. There are so many entrepreneurs in India. And it's wonderful, by the way, to watch the energy and the confidence. And we provide them with a lot of services that we provide other people around the world to help them grow. And then it's the individual Indian consumer. Mm. And so many of them are in cities, and so many of them aspire to be global citizens and to travel around the world. And we're very well equipped to helping them. So each of these areas are growing. And yes. again, our plans are to help our clients grow, help them with what they need, and we'll grow as they grow. From a business contribution point of view, where does uh, India stand in emerging markets and where will it play a global role or possibly a role in your global ambition in the future? So when we look at our core business, Citicorp, um, all of the emerging markets are about 50 percent of Citi's business, mm -hmm. which by the way is a significant number, and that includes our Latin American operation, Asia, Eastern Europe. Uh, by the way, we're one of the largest banks in Africa. We're in, uh, we do business in about 34 countries in, in Africa as well. India is a major part of mm -hmm. our emerging market story, and we certainly expect it to be much, much larger going forward. You know, I was noticing you were mentioning how you'd li rather see a lot more business happen, what is probably intra-country within emerging markets as opposed to west to east. But that's been happening for years, right? Within emerging markets, how do you see India engaging with the rest of them in Asia? Right. So, uh, and you're right. If we go back to the notion of globalization, it used to be emerging markets trading with developed markets. And almost like a hub and spoke approach, everything right. going through the developed markets. Today, we're in much more of a network world. And it's really the emerging market to emerging market flows that are growing exponentially, which means... It's about India's business with Africa, with China, mm. with Latin America, and a number of our companies are taking full advantage of those, the capabilities they have and the demand that's being generated. Now, uh, we're in 109 countries. Most of those countries are in Latin America, Africa, Asia. And what we're seeing our Indian multinationals do is they're, we're seeing them use their ability to operate extremely well in this emerging market and mm -hmm. translate that to others. It's great to see that happen. So when you say that, you know, City is America's global bank, that story is still going strong, even if the West recovers and recovers solidly. You know, uh, I'd say we're the world's global bank. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and one of the wonderful things about being in India for more than 100 years and China for more than 100 years Philippines and Japan, I mean, a number of different parts of the world, we've been there for decades, and in some cases more than a century, is we have that local presence. We have those local relationships. We're part of the local fabric, and wherever I go, 
city feels like it's part of the local umbrella, the local setting. And so wherever we go, we are their local bank. And so we are the world's global bank. Do you get those signals from the Indian government as well? I know you meet a whole lot of corporation heads and they're sending you all these big signals about how bullish they are on their own economy and the rest of the world. But do you get positive signals about how India's growth story will remain on track? Because policy is always a big part of it, right? Of course. And um, uh, when you look at where we are in India today and look at how policies have helped growth along the way, one can only be optimistic about uh, what we can do going forward. Uh, and you know, I too listened to the budget and saw some elements of it. And, yeah. um, and eight to nine percent growth is a wonderful thing. Uh, and there's no reason why we cannot do even better as, um, as our linkages with the rest of the world continue. Okay. Uh, and I do know that whether it's business or policy makers and or individuals in India, we're all exactly on the same page. We'd like to see India grow well and develop well. The U.S. is a restructuring phase. We need to find new industries, n new economies, new companies to, f uh, to serve different clients, to create different products. That takes time. Good regulation and strong regulation makes for stronger financial markets and better financial institutions. That's a very important perspective uh, for all your view viewers and everybody to understand. Just look at the last crisis and look at how well India has performed through all of that. And really hats off to the Reserve Bank, the SEBI and everybody in the country for having had the right approaches to regulation.